Hi, welcome to the 18th video in our 3D racer project. Uh, there's a lot to kind of cover here and trying to get it all done within 20, 20 videos. So for this video, uh, we're going to make it so that we can lose in our race mode. Currently, we have it so that we lose in our score mode and a UI element pops up that lets us restart the level or go back to the main menu. And we want that same option inside of score mode. So I need to make it set up so that we can lose inside of our race mode. Um, that requires us also being able to lose. So we'll have to make it so that our enemy car will be able to trigger uh, a number of laps that's completed. And if it completes two laps before we have, then we'll lose the game in that fashion. And I'm kind of doing this by the seat of my pants. I haven't really did a good job of planning this out in advance. Um, because I was making the game a couple different times and uh, the other project I just didn't keep up with. So I only have this one now. So I'm not able to test out some of my stuff beforehand. And so I apologize. There might be a little bit more mess ups in this video as I move along. If not, great. But I just know that uh, that might be a possibility. I'm going to kind of learn this as I go through the process. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first thought is we need to get into race mode. So I'm going to press play and go into a scene here. Just want to look at it and think through what I have to do. So I click on race and I have an enemy car here. I muted my audio and all my UI stuff is set up here. <clears throat> so what do I want to have happen? Well, one, why, is these, why are these gas tanks on? I need to make it so that my collectibles turn off when we're in race mode. Does it recognize they're in race mode? No, because we have a timer starting at 15 and the score is zero. So we need to go back into our score mode script and turn things on and off based on us going into score mode. Sorry, race mode. Uh, so go into scripts and we have the straight course score mode. And I really regret naming it this um, because it's very confusing. Really, this is what game mode is what I should have called this because it's controlling all of them. So here in our start, we have a um, this checking for a mode selected. Now, why is time remaining equal time at start outside of this process here? That needs to be inside because this is only going to work whenever inside of score mode, which is that needs to be in there. Hmm. I wonder why I put that there. I'm a little not sure why. Sure why I did that. Okay, I, I'm going to put that in there, and I apologize for that. So we also need to do an if statement here. If mode selected equals equals, and just to verify, uh, we had mode select script, race mode was game mode equals two. So, so if, I, if it's two, then I need to sort of do some of the inverse things here. I need to set the race panel to being true. I need to set the, I just, I'll just get everything here, the rest of these. So I'm going to copy and paste. So setting this to false, so we don't have the score up. The enemy car set active is going to be true, which it already sort of is, but it's might, well, might as well make sure that we turn things on and off. Collectibles are set to false. Timer is running equals true, right? Timer is running is a Boolean that we are using to count down. Yeah, so actually we still want this to be false, I think. I have to go back and see what this does. I'm a little rusty, by the way. I'm sorry. It's been about two weeks or at least more than a week, sorry, that I've been able to work on this. So you sort of lose some of that. That's why comments are helpful, which I have not done a good job with. Uh, we need to make a, so the required laps are gonna be score mode required laps. I want it to be race mode required laps. So I'm gonna go up here to the top and make a private integer called race mode required laps. And I'm gonna set that equal to two. 
and then come down here and make this second one into race mode required laps. The required laps UI.txt is going to be set to 2. And then I don't need time remaining equals time at start inside of this one. I'm going to comment that out. And also, let me just comment out time. Well, let me just see if this how this plays out. All right. So on start, score mode. So let's go back to here and let's see if everything works the way we want it to. I don't think I have to um, initialize anything. I think I do. So let's go to the second scene. Just to, I want to, I want to go verify. Uh, everything I didn't, I only, the only thing I created variable wise that was new was that int. No, I should be fine. So let's just press play and see if this plays out the way we want it to. And click and go to race mode. Okay, I'm going to pause it for a second. So we now have our lap. Our zero two is coming from our required laps here. Uh, so the panel is working, our enemy car is on, our collectibles are turned off, and the timer is running equals false. I want to check and make sure that it doesn't create any errors in the console when we keep playing. And then, yeah, I think everything looks looking good. Even my best time is still set up here. So let's go to let me check console, keep playing. So let's see if when cat down gets to zero, does that cause any issues? No. Good. So that was pretty simple, uh, getting that to turn on when we go to our uh, second race mode. So what we want to do next is make it so that we can lose the um, game to the enemy car. So let's go ahead and go to, let's go to that level. Now knowing that we have to go back, um, and I'm curious, actually, let's go ahead and test that this script in the night track. There you go. Go to race. Three. So my lap time. Oh, you know what? My lap timer did not start here. And actually, it should wait it until the countdown. So the milli of this has not been. So I have a problem here. I have something that's not assigned the way it's meant to. On the lap time manager. Sorry. Lap time manager. Uh, I'm missing these objects. So it's good to check these things out. Uh, track two, lap time, load, load, sorry, load lap time manager. The best minute display. So let's go to canvas. Remember I changed up my whole canvas. So that's the lap panel. Hmm, where did I? Panel. Is it under lap panel? I thought it was. That's this side here. My mini map. Countdown timer. Is it under timer panel? Oh, it's under race panel, but I have it turned off. That's why. All right. So let's go back to load lap time manager. And it needs to know my best minute here, my best second. And my best milli display here. Was that everything? Um, I also should make sure that countdown. Where's the countdown? I think it was on start manager. Does it know to start? Yeah, let me save this and see if that fixes that problem we have. So go back to track select, press play. Okay, so am I still getting an unassigned reference exception of lab time manager? Oh, I, I look. So I guess I had two issues here. Maybe that's that's it right there. So the numbers are probably ticking down. I just can't see them because they're not assigned properly. Sorry to take up so much of your time fixing my problems, um, but maybe you have these same issues because I missed them while covering it with you. So lap time manager needs it as well. There you go. Okay. Well, I kind of inadvertently discovered both of my issues. 
So, race panel. I need the minute box. The second display goes here. Sometimes my variable names were just a kind of iffy. A little dubious. So let me save that. Try it one more time. <clears throat> Notice it takes a second for this to load. So click here, hover, that looks fine. Hit race. There you go. Now this shouldn't start until countdown reaches zero, if I remember correctly. I will have to go back and fix that. But I think for now, it's okay. That'll be an easy fix, I think. Let's focus on what we're here to do, which is to make it so that we lose the race. So on our enemy car, which we have prefabbed, if I believe. Prefab? Do I have enemy car prefabbed? Maybe I don't. Um, we should make it so that it detects whenever it hits the start manager and checking its colliders. So let me go to my first track. Yeah, let's handle it not from the enemy car other than applying the correct colliders. Sorry, scripts, I mean, I mean to be in the scenes folder. So in scenes, I'm gonna go to track one and I have a start manager here. And that is just in the world, but where, uh, it was my starting line? No. Oh, starting trigger. That's where everything's kept at. And it has a boss collider and it's using the lap complete script here. So that's where we wanna do this work at. So on lap complete, <clears throat> we're saying if we hit something called player, then do all of these things here. But below that, I should also just say, wait, not there. We want to be right, yeah, just on the outside of this. So I'm going to follow this all the way down. So right here. So right below, right above the two brackets here. If, and then we're doing it as a on trigger enter, so it needs to be a compare tag here. If, uh, is it other dot game object? It, was other the name of the variable? No, collision was the name of the variable. Sorry, I'm not doing a good job of paying attention to what I'm doing. Collision dot game object dot compare tag and then the name of the tag is going to be enemy car um, I think that's fine then we want to do a couple things uh, we're going to make a increase the enemy completed laps by one and just like we did up here so enemy complete laps plus one equals one. If enemy complete laps equals equals enemy required laps, we're basically going to do something like this. I'm going to just kind of copy this here and then change it here. So I'm going to just paste that. Instead of completed laps, we're going to make a new variable called right under here. So I can sort of parallel it. Public integer called enemy completed laps. and public static int enemy required lapse and finally mm, lap time manager do I need that no I don't need that right now okay <clears throat> so enemy completed lapse it's going to go up by one and if the enemies completed laps, uh, there's the Y here, equals the enemies required laps, then we're going to set the finish race manager set after the true, and then we're going to say finish race, the race is one equals false. So we have lost the race. So that'll be a losing condition for us. 
Um, I think that's really sort of the crux of this. Um, so enemy complete elapsed. So do we need to set enemy complete its laps and require laps somewhere else? So in score mode, I'm curious, do we want to set that whenever we choose our race mode? I think we should. Um, yeah, I think we have a little more information here in two. So we should probably go get... <clears throat> what script are we looking at? We're looking at the complete it. Sorry, lap complete dot. And we made it a static on. Let's have so many scripts here, right? Enemy required laps. We should make that two as well. equals two, which I need to hold up at the top. So I can't just put a two down here. So I'm gonna place that right here as a private integer known as enemy race mode required lapse, and then set it to two here. And then change this to be enemy require race mode require lapse, which are, which is now two. So that should handle that for us. Um, do I need to assign anything? Um, so I save that. Let's go back to lap complete and required lapse. That's just going to go up by one. So at the beginning, it should be zero. I think we're good to go. Uh, now, testing this, of course, I need to make sure that my enemy car gets around the lap uh, twice. And I need to make sure that the colliders have the correct tag on them. So I, I use the tag of enemy car zero one. So let me go back to my script and just change that. So compare tag player here, but down here, I want it to be enemy car zero, one as the tag. And then another thing that we noted was that having the tag on the parent object of enemy car wasn't enough. Just like our car, it has a child underneath it that has colliders. And we should already have on the collider body, bottom, all this stuff, the correct tag of enemy car zero one. So that when it collides, it does that. Um, so I think that should be it. So here's what I want to Before we go too much further, though, I need to, um, let me go back to my track zero one. one <clears throat> And I, I realize now, let's separate my scene here, that I need to make it so that I have a start trigger. The start trigger is detecting when I, my enemy car hits it. Uh, and so it has to be turned on. And also I need a half point trigger for my enemy car. And there's two ways I could do this. So I could build a whole new half point trigger and start trigger for my enemy car, which would make it look very similar to what we currently have. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Um, like I could, I could have two, you know, an enemy car start trigger and half point trigger, which could simplify some things, but we also could just put in what we have and just streamline our process a little bit. So I'm going to go look at my half point trigger here and it starts on, let me look at that script. And it has an on trigger enter and it's looking for a tag with the player. And I can just do an else if statement below. For looking for a collision with our Our enemy car. So that's what I want to do. I'm in my half point trigger strip. Object dot compare tag. And it was enemy car score zero one. There you go. Just want to look again. I always forget. 
There we go. So no underscore for me. And we can do the same thing. Now the problem with this is, is that if our enemy car collides, it's gonna turn that one off. So maybe we should just have our own tags here. Yeah, I'm starting to think we should just have our own, sorry, not our own tags, but our own triggers for these things. Because the, my thought process is, if the player hits it first, then the start triggers and the half point triggers will be off and it won't be able to detect if the enemy's gone around. So I think we need to have it its own. Okay, so that makes more sense. <clears throat> and then I guess we'll need to change our start trigger again. That's that script there. So let's take our half point trigger in our hierarchy and hit Command D to duplicate it. Gonna move it right underneath, and I'm gonna call it enemy half point trigger. And I'm gonna build a new script for it. I feel like I'm overcomplicating this, but maybe not. And I'll build a new script called enemy half point trigger no space all capital uh, and I will open this up in Visual Studio and we'll do the same thing essentially um, where we will um, let's look at our where's our half point trigger script? I'll just I can just copy this essentially bring it over here I'll change this to enemy start trigger. Set active and then enemy halfway trigger. Set active. And then we're looking for the tag of enemy car zero one. Saving that. Going back to our enemy half point trigger and applying this script instead of what we currently had, which is half point trigger. So remove this component and then add enemy half point trigger. It needs to, we don't have the start trigger yet, but we do want to drag itself into here so it turns itself off. So the starting trigger. <laughs> This will be pretty simple. Um, let's duplicate that. Command D. Drag it here. Rename it to enemy starting trigger. I'm going to remove this lab complete script and make a new. I mean, basically, I can just copy this. Uh, I'm going to go C-Sharp script, call it enemy start trigger. And paste in that script we just used, referencing itself though. Enemy start, I could have just copied it from the other one, but here we are. Changing all my variable names. And so whenever this, what did I spell? Enemy, not an H here. Okay. Whenever it comes in tag with enemy car zero one, we want it to turn off the, turn itself off, false, and then turn the other one on, true. And I believe that will take care of this. <clears throat> All right, that is saved, and I need to assign these variables here. So enemy start trigger goes right here. On the enemy starting trigger, I need to apply that script called enemy oops, add component enemy start trigger. Drag itself, initialize it right here, half point trigger. Enemy half point trigger goes right here. 
save that. And now we should test this. Uh, if this works, then we're obviously going to go and put it into our second scene. Let's go to scenes, uh, track select, and press play. Load time is a little long. We're going to go into race mode. Yeah. Okay, so I saw that my enemy half point trigger turned back on, which means that it's detecting these collisions. Um, now, I want to make sure that the enemy will keep in count. Is it on certain trigger? Yeah. Enemy's completed lapse. Was that zero? So that should be detecting. Oh, you know why? Because we built it all in our lap complete script. But we're not. Um, we now need to reference this from our new means of doing, um, you know, checking. So instead of it, it being held here, um, we can just instead, maybe let's hold this as a mm, its own method. Yeah, let's call it. Let's do that. So instead of an on trigger enter, let's go right here and build a void <coughs> enemy complete it. I'm in, I'm sorry. I'm in my lap complete script. Complete it lap method. And I will now instead place all of these here into this. There you go. So now I need to call this, I'll make this a public void, complete it, enemy lap. And let's go over to our enemy star trigger and call back to our lap complete script dot enemy. No, what was the method name? I just, I just wrote it out. Hmm, enemy completed lap. Did I put that in the right place? It is outside my void trigger enter. Let's then build. Let's just build a reference instead. Let's try that. Um, public lap complete lap complete script. And in here, let's say lap complete script dot enemy completed lap. Let's just do it that way. Okay. So that should call the lap completed script. All right, let me get out of play mode over here. Go back. Uh, sorry. So in our scene, track two, sorry, track one. On my enemy's, enemy starting trigger, it needs to have a reference for the lap complete script, which is contained on my normal starting trigger. Right there. Okay. All right. Oh, save. Press play. Click. Race. I wonder if I did public static, it would have just come up. All right, so once again, I'm checking to see if my enemy half point trigger works by turning on the enemy starting trigger. And then I want to check and see if on my normal starting trigger, if enemy's complete elapsed, goes up by one. And did our starting trigger turn on? 
Yes, it did. And our half point trigger turned off. Good. Trigger, see if we go by one. Boom, there you go. All right, I'm gonna keep letting it run around and see if we if it calls the finish. And let's see. There you go. We lost our enemy car. Got there. Ah, oh, but you notice how the enemy car is scooting back now. Um, that implies that you know the enemy reverse script is still in effect. So let's get out of here really quick. And whenever, so on lap complete. Oh, I didn't did I save. I did save, it just made a small difference to the public. That doesn't matter. Um, we also want to go over here and turn off our, <clears throat> let's put it right here, our enemy reverse script. Do I have it on here? Let's go to the top. I don't think I do. So I'm gonna put that where my enemy uh, segment of variables are. So public, uh, yeah, we'll just do public game objects. Let me reverse. I don't want the game object off. I just want to turn. Just do it like this right here. Let me reverse. Let me reverse. Script. Here. So sort of like we've done, let me save it real quick, in our countdown manager. We've done, oh, we did the git component, didn't we? Let's do that. That makes more sense. Uh, I'm just going to copy this line of code. Uh, enemy car dot git component, enemy reverse dot enable equals true. So I'm going to command C. Uh, so go back to lap complete. I do need to have a reference to my enemy car, though, specifically. Lap complete, where'd you go? Right here. So instead of enemy public, that's why I was doing game object. I was thinking I had to work off a game object. Uh, we'll call it enemy car. And then down here, inside of our lap complete, we need to turn off that enemy reverse script. Yes. Yeah, I'll do it here instead of trying to do it in the race finish. And we'll turn this off. To, let's set this to false. Save this. Going back um, onto our starting trigger and track zero one. It needs to have a reference for our enemy car. So I will drag that in. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and do these same things in our second track. Um, we could prefab this, and honestly, there's no reason why we shouldn't. Um, just know we have to go set up our starting trigger. Uh, but let's, you know, yeah, let's prefab. That always makes things a little bit easier. So in prefab, I'm going to drag in my enemy half point trigger and my enemy starting trigger right here. And save that. <coughs> Going into my second scene, my night scene. Track zero two. I will drag in those prefabs. Now where their positions, where's my half point trigger on this? Right over here. What I'll probably do is take my prefab, uh, enemy half point trigger, drag it into the scene, drag it as a child of half point trigger, and then reset its components so it has the same position and stuff, and then drag it out. Let me see if that that's the case. Yep. There you go. It's right there in the same spot. Uh, and that needs to be on. And then let's take my enemy starting trigger, drag it into the scene, drag it in as a child of starting trigger, take the enemy starting trigger that's a child now, and reset so that it um, has the same position as my starting trigger, and then drag it out. 
put it right above here. So I need to initialize some of these uh, things here. So the enemy halfway trigger goes here. Uh, the lack complete script was on the starting trigger in this scene. Uh, on the half point trigger, it needs to know the start trigger. Enemy starting trigger right here. And then on our starting trigger object, it's, ooh, did I not pass through my best times? Is that setting? Hmm. All right, enemy car, zero one, goes into here. Uh, lap time manager script. I'm kind of curious. Why do I have so many blanks here? Let me save this. I'm going to look back at my other scene. Did I just not? You know, I don't think I set it. My lap complete script when I brought in that new canvas. So I want to make sure I set up best minute display. So, so timer panel. Okay, yeah. Best minute display goes here. Best second display here. Best milli display goes there. We don't need to touch the complete laps or enemy complete laps. And then the time lap manager script or the lap time manager script. Because you find the references and scene. And that's held on our lap time manager. Well, that makes total sense. So on starting trigger, dragging in the lap time manager. Right there. That should take care of everything. So one of the last things we need to do as well is ensure that we have a UI that tells us what our enemy, what lap they, they have completed. So we're probably going to want to store that inside of the race panel here because that's going to show up in the race mode. So I'm going to turn this race panel on and temporarily turn off my score panel so that we could see those things. Um, I need to build a, I mean, I have this lap panel right here. I could just duplicate that and then change it to fit our, what we need, which is like an enemy lap count or something like that. So let's try that. Uh, and since it's a child of this canvas, hmm. Yeah, let's try that. Command D. Got it. Okay. Well, let's open the prepap. What is inside of here? You know, let's not let's not handle it through the prefab. Let's just do it here. So, all right. So, enemy lap count. And as a child of this, we have lap time. So let's take this snap to two D so we can see a little bit better. And find this. It's up here. Scroll out a little bit. And I'm probably going to put mine at the bottom of the screen. Right about. So taking this, I'm going to anchor it. So clicking over here, holding down Option on my MacBook keyboard, and then anchoring it down there to the bottom. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, now let's say Lap Timer. It just says Lap as a text. Uh, so let's say enemy laps. So this whole thing is inside, held inside of a panel. So what I'm probably going to do really quick is take all of these out. These three, drag them out, make it not a child of this, so that I can edit the size of this panel so it looks a little bit bigger. Um, so it's you know, you can fit in all the text that we need. Let's try dragging back in lap timer and see if, if I stretch this one out. Will that be big enough to hold this? Uh, probably need a little bit more space. So I'm going to drag this back out again and try it one more time, stretching this object out a little bit more. I think it would look good also underneath lap zero two. I mean, you could, um, but because this is so much larger than the other one, I think putting it to another corner, you know, looks fine as well. So lap timer looks good. Lap required. Uh, 
we don't really need that to change at any point, so uh, I'm just going to scoot that over here. Hmm. I like that space there, so it's 0, 2. Then laps complete it. Looks off a good little bit. So, yeah, I think I need to stretch it out just a little bit more. It feels like it's a really big panel, but. So I'm using this scaling tool to widen up some. All right, drag him back in as a child. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Laps. Uh, let me move my laps required over. Somewhere like that. And then laps completed. Goes right there. And I think that looks pretty good. So we need to make it so that we, when we have our enemies hitting a lap, we need to update that UI. So that's held in our yeah, just, I'm wondering if I want to update my prefab. <coughs> Let me change just some of these names. No, I don't need to. Okay, let's leave this here for a second and I'll keep thinking about that. So that's held in our what's on our starting trigger, right? So enemies completed laps. So here we'll add one, and then we should update a U, the UI to represent that. So we need to hold that up here as a text mesh pro object. Is that how we are doing this? Yeah, I think I think that's okay. Are we are we holding on another script for our player? Hmm. I think it's okay holding it down here. I think it's okay to put it inside of this. We can we can do that there. And oh, I gotta remove this little bit of script there. We don't need that anymore. Okay, get rid of that if statement. It was just sitting around. Was that just uh, you know? It was on our was it on our score mode script? Uh, don't remember. Okay, but well, it'll be it'll be fine here. So, public text mesh pro you GUI. Oh, not publics, public. And I do have a reference to make text mesh pro here, namespace, so that's fine. And we'll call it enemy completed laps UI. And I'll scroll down here. To right whenever we complete the lap, just say enemy completed laps dot UI dot text is equal to enemy completed laps. There. Oh, do we have? Do we not? Hmm. Cannot. How about we say dot to string? How about that? If you want to give us trouble, let's save that and see if we get it, the results that we want. Um, yeah, this is a good way to test the scene out, anyways. So, our lap complete will need a reference to that enemy lap count, laps completed, right there. I think I need to, on my original lap panel, I need to put in my laps completed here. So save that. Now I need to come in and do, I need to turn off. Mm -hmm. So this is all part of the race panel. So I need to drag enemy lap count into race panel and then turn off race panel and then turn on our score, I'm um, sorry, our score panel. I think that's what we had set up for here. Saving my scene, going back into track select. 
and then playing this night scene. And I want to see if it goes around once, if it updates the completed it's a race. There you go. That shows up the way we want it to. And in this scene, I want to check and make sure that the half point trigger is being turning things on and off the way it's meant to. This corner here was really tricky for me. It took me a while to kind of like, that worked. Starting triggers on. And then I want to see if enemy laps goes from zero to one. Well, it would help if my car was not in the way. So where did my enemy car go just now? Let me call it. Oh, there you go. Hey, and there you go. Enemy laps went from one to two. Perfect. So that worked. I'm still getting those flickering lights. So obviously I need to go back into a track zero one and do the same thing. And I'll do that really quickly with you. Um, I could. This is the part about the prefabbing I was a little concerned with, but I think I can come into here and just take because we have so many things in our canvases that have, you know change or they're making references to stuff that when I prefab I worry I'm creating more work for myself. But I think if I come into timer panel, I mean, if I prefab, do I already have a prefab for race panel? That's my question. I don't, which is okay. So let's. I could. I could just prefab enemy lap count. Let me do that then. That's fine. All right. So let's go back into scenes. Track zero one. Save what I just did. Under the canvas here, under timer panel, race panel. I'm going to turn that on momentarily. Turn off my score panel. And now I can drag in that prefab we just made. Prefab of what was it called? Enemy lap count. Drag that into the race panel. Awesome, that's in there. The issue just then becomes uh, making sure that uh, my starting trigger has the reference to that UI that we want it. So closing everything up I still need it and it um, where is that UI any lap count laps complete it goes right there and that should uh, be all fine and good so now we have two modes we have a race mode that works where we have to beat our enemy around the lap twice uh, and if not we lose the game and then we also have a um, score mode that we just have to collect gas cans before we run out of time. So our, our modes are done. So I think for, we're going to wait to the next video and start handling a cash element in our race mode so that whenever you hit cash you can collect money. So if you win the race you'll get to keep money from the race and then you can save after doing a couple of those to unlock other cars or and then your last level. So I think this is where we should end this video.